and he'd start telling us what we have. What you're looking at is a 1934 Indiana Model T7 Army Scout car. And Indiana was a subsidiary of the White Truck Company. Uh, actually, it was an independent truck company from about World War I until 1928, and they got in financial trouble. Brockway Motors bought them. And Brockway decided to divest up them, and White Truck Company bought them in 1933. And the next year, they built about 76 of these armored scout cars for the U.S. Army. And this was the first uh, conceptual designed up from the ground up four-wheel drive armor-plated scout car that uh, the Army utilized. It's got a Hercules uh, JXC motor in it. Uh, the Indianas were assembled trucks, meaning they used parts off the shelf from other manufacturers as opposed to like white trucks where they used a lot of their own engines and, and other components that they made themselves. White uh, continued to build Indiana trucks until 1939 when they closed that division out. This truck uh, was used by the Army actively in the cavalry units up until uh, about World War II. In 1938 and 9, they came up with a newer version of this vehicle called the M3 Scout Car. Uh, and it then they used that and put a uh, trial with a half track driving mechanism behind it and just conceived the half track and so all of the uh, white scout cars and half tracks that were designed and built for World War II uh, this is the granddaddy of all those vehicles uh, and as near as I can tell this is the only one that's left out of the 76 that were originally built in 1934. <laughs> so this really wasn't built as competition for the uh, Willys and Kaiser and Ford Jeeps and, uh, and the, the, Jeep, Dodge the Jeep, power wagon. The Jeep and, would not be invented for another six years after this was made. Jeeps were mm -hmm. first came out with the 1940, and this is a 1934. Uh, this was in the middle of the Depression. The Army had uh, not a lot of money to utilize the things because of the Depression. Uh, but Hitler was gearing up. The Japanese were being aggressive. Mussolini was in Italy, and the Army decided they had to start doing some upgrading. And this was one of the early efforts to modernize the Army. Cowl assembly that you're looking at here is out of quarter inch armor plate made by the Diebold Safe Company. And the little apron up under the windshield going across there is half inch thick armor plate. And it originally had two folding uh, windshields out of armor plate folded up or down in front of that that would cover up uh, where the sliding glass was. So that it had uh, bullet plate protection for the body of the car where the men sat and the fuel tank. It had the cowl that was armor plate. The firewall is armor plate, and it had a uh, shroud around the radiator that was armor plate with adjustable shutters in it. But interestingly, the hood itself was just standard steel. It wasn't until they uh, went to the later versions of it that they made the hood actually out of armor plate. I guess they figured, finally figured out that uh, bullet holes in your motor are not a good thing in a battle situation. Well, I was just noticing that those hood sides didn't look terribly thick. No, they're just and I guess, sheet metal. And I guess that's analogous to what they found in the last few years with the Humvee that they just there wasn't was designed design. as, an ar were... as an armored vehicle and that's what well, they needed when they got in the car. Do you mind if I hop no, up no, here no. and take help a look at the power yourself. plant? Help us out. Uh, as they always say, we gear up to fight the next war like it was the last one. Ooh. And that's the same way with these Humvee deals. They were built for battlefield kind of use. They weren't built for urban warfare uh, and hidden mines and unexploded devices and stuff. Right, well, they, they, were, they were never they were, designed as an armor personnel carrier, no, which is... They were designed as a super jeep. Right, you know, exactly, exactly. So, uh, no, and, and nobody's come back when they've criticized and, and compared to what they had previously. Yeah, they just, no. what, what they think they should have been. Right. And they tried to make it a multi-purpose vehicle in that you can get it as a cargo carrier, a machine gun carrier, right. a, an ambulance, a parts truck, a, you know, whatever. They put all sorts of uses on the back end of it, so it's a multi-purpose chassis. Well, and I'm certain AM General had some sort of speed and mileage targets that they were sure, supposed to sure. hit right. to get the Various contract, and uh, which they ne the armored versions never would make. I've seen, right. well, I've seen pictures on on TV of a Humvee convoy, and they all they all have a turret out of World War II bomber on the back of them now. 
just it looks similar yeah <laughs> Well, this is an amazing vehicle. I hope someday you it, can find a. When I found it, it that, was sitting at the end of a hedgerow against a creek, and the back half of the frame had been cut off and salvaged. Uh, the hood was completely gone, no radiator, no fender, as you can see. Uh, and so I had to find another 1934 Indiana truck chassis in order to get the rest of the frame, and I've got that welded on so it's now up on four wheels. So, little by little. Mm -hmm. But, uh, as I say, near as I can tell, it may be the only one in the world. It looks like you don't have the transmission or transfer I've, I've case. I've got either. the clutch in the, the transmission in the shop back home. The transfer case is hanging here under the middle. Oh, okay. It's there. Okay. Uh, and this is, this is actually the truck frame rear end, not the right rear end for the vehicle. The, the actual T7, although they used an identical axle, they had a 5-inch wide spool that bolted on the brake drum that the wheel then bolted onto. It extended that rear wheel out five inches and that way it would line up with the front wheel for tracking purposes Oh, for the four-wheel drive and off-country use. Right. I'm and I haven't got the rear end switched. I've got the original rear end for oh, it. Oh, you do but, have. Okay. Yeah, it was laying over under another tree. <laughs>